sin is smoking haram. Smoking, that is smoking cigarettes. This is an area which some Muslims have had some confusion concerning. Wherein some people have said it is makhu, that is, it is something which is disliked, but not something which is sinful. Whereas haram means that it is prohibited and therefore sinful for one to do so. In fact, when smoke, smoking, the practice of smoking cigarettes first entered into the Muslim world in the 16th century, when it came into Turkey, the scholars of that time attempted to make a ruling concerning it, because in Islam there is a religious ruling on everything. On everything that we can do, we can say, we can think about, there is in Islam a religious ruling concerning it. This is a part of the comprehensiveness of Islam, that it touches every aspect of a human being's life. So the scholars of that time were obliged to make a ruling concerning it. Where does it fit in within the scheme of Islamic law? What they observed from it was that it created a bad breath, what is known as the smoker's breath. And anybody who is around those who smoke knows what the smoker's breath is. Now, smokers are usually not aware of the smoker's breath because they get used to it. But those who are in their presence know the horrible smell of the smoker's breath. So, the scholars of the time looked in the text of the Quran and in the Sunnah, the teachings of the Prophet, to find out what would be the ruling, the appropriate ruling for something which produces a horrible smelling breath. And they found a statement of the Prophet, may Allah speak and blessings be upon him, in which he said that those who eat raw onions and garlic should not come to our mind because of the foulness of the smell which comes from the mouth of one who eats raw garlic and onions. So it is something which was ruled as being maku or disliked. Not haram, it is not prohibited to eat garlic and onions, but to eat what it and to go into the mosque. Because you know when we close our prayer we turn from side to side and say Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Now if a person has been eating garlic, when he says that he is harming his brother who is sitting beside him in prayer. So to avoid this harm, this foul breath, it was ruled his life, makri, for one to eat garlic and onion. Similarly, the scholars then made an analogy with the smoking and said, well, similarly, because smoking produces this foul breath, it is makru. However, 400 years have passed, and we now have new knowledge concerning smoking. The medical profession has stated unequivocally, without any doubt, that smoking produces cancer. And we know that cancer kills. Therefore, smoking kills. We have to look from another point of view now. So the Muslim scholars, when looking into the situation, they saw what the Prophet said concerning the killing of oneself. And he said that one who kills himself in this life will find himself killing himself over and over in the hell. Killing oneself in Islam as in Christianity, is considered haram, prohibited, sinful. It is a sin. From the teachings of Moses, carried on by Prophet Jesus, carried on by Prophet Muhammad, the Lord peace and blessings be on all of them, they all taught that to kill oneself is a sin, prohibited. So, scholars now rule that smoking is haram or sinful. So any sincere believing Muslim or sincere believing Christian would not smoke knowing that 
smoking pill because suicide is prohibited. And one may argue, well, when you smoke, you're not killing yourself, uh, like stabbing yourself with a knife or drinking poison. It's not the same thing. But if I were to say to you, listen, if you were to take a tea glass with only a few drops of poison, every day you drank that little bit, little bit, and after six months or after a year you died from it. Is that any different from taking a full glass and drinking it one time and dying from it? No. It is still suicide. When you drink that substance, knowing that it will kill you, then your act is an act of suicide. There are substances, according to Islamic law, which may be in and of themselves halal or permissible, but for some people it may also be halal. For example, if you are a diabetic, if you are a diabetic and the doctor tells you, if you take sugar it will make you comatose and you will die. For you, taking sugar is simple. So, in summary, the Islamic position concerning smoking is that it is haram or prohibited, sinful. Uh, question, uh, why do Muslims, before they go to observe their formal prayers, why are they obl obliged to wash their body parts? Actually. If you go into the Bible, the person will ask this, uh, obviously the Christian. If you go into the Bible, you will find reference to ablution. Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, and the prophets before and between used to wash themselves before prayer. It is not something new which Islam brought. This was a part of the teachings of the prophets. That cleaning, washing of the hands and the face, the mouth, the feet. This cleaning is not merely a physical cleaning. It is not the main intent behind it. Part of it is cleaning because you know, if the commander of the base sends a command for you to come and see him, and you are dirty, wearing your dirty clothes, what are you going to do? You're going to go and change your clothes because you're coming to stand before the commander of the day. Well, if uh, you feel that way, should you not feel that way even more so in the case of God? In fact, God has said in the Quran that we should take our best clothing when we go to prayer. And we try to present ourselves in the best manner when we stand in formal prayer. Of course, one may make informal prayer anytime, anywhere, without having to go through these acts of cleaning. But the act of cleaning is also uh, a training uh, ground for Muslims to maintain cleanliness, purity, keeping one clean, not only before God, but with his fellow worshippers. Because when Muslims pray, they pray very close together, side by side, shoulder to shoulder. And if one does not clean oneself properly, then there will be all kinds of smells coming from the people in their prayers. But as I said, fundamentally, the cleaning of oneself is a spiritual act. We go through the washing of the hands, the mouth, face, etc. But in doing so, we do so believing that we are preparing ourselves for the worship of God. We are bringing our mind and our spirit into a frame that we may worship God in the purest sense that we can. So, this is the requirement which has been prescribed in the final revelation, confirmed by the Prophet, and it is in fact a confirmation of the teachings of the earlier Prophets. It is not something which was brought by Islam new. But merely, uh, I'd like to just thank you all for coming.
and I hope that what has been discussed and presented has been of some benefit to you.